Good day, good morning everyone, depending on what time you're looking at the video. Uh, this is Jody, I'm back at the, uh, the shop, the garage. Welcome to uh, Russ Lover's Garage. Uh, this video is gonna serve two purposes. I've uh, been asked of recent uh, by a lot of different people, both young and old. Uh, when you go to look for buying a project, buying a car, what do you look for, okay? Uh, gonna cover a few things there, but more importantly, I want to let everyone know that we have picked up another project uh, we're going to step outside and do a walk around on it and show you some of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video and specifically what I look for. Uh, number one, uh, when you're looking for a, a project, price is of the utmost importance, okay? Uh, depending on which way you're going to go, are you going to do the shiny paint? Are you going to do make a nice street rod? What are you going to do with it? Got to consider those things. Got to look at body. Got to search out, see if there's rust, how many panels have got to be done. Uh, but more importantly, the first time you start to look at a project, you've got to decide for yourself, is this something I'm gonna do for me to keep? We're gonna do a family type thing, we're gonna to go to rod runs, we're gonna to go to cruise ends, those type things, and keep the car for a long period of time. Okay, basically you can spread the cost of everything out over the time that you have it, okay? And, and what I'm getting at is, you may find a car uh, that you really, really like, means a lot to you, you're gonna build it, few years down the road, maybe you lose interest in it, maybe you get done with it, you see something else you want to get. You've, in the back of your mind, you've got to understand that just because you like it, everybody else may not, okay? The Camaros, the Chevelles, the Mustangs, all those type of things are always going to be uh, popular, the Tri-5s, uh, Tri-5 Chevrolets. They're always going to be popular. Uh, they're up and down, they ebb and flow. Your, your old Mopars, your big blocks, your, your 440s, your 426s, uh, those motors, those cars are always going to be popular. They always have been. Okay, so you've got to consider uh, am I going to keep this car for a long period of time and what is my budget? What is the end game? How much money can I afford to spend on this thing to get it to where I want it to be? And I know this always, this seems kind of simplistic, but what I've seen a lot of people do and where I've picked up cars and, and you know, it just, it, it didn't end well. I got good deals on stuff, but I felt like that the people that I bought the car from, uh, they, they really were in a bad spot. Uh, and, I, and I bought it at an agreed upon price, but what they realized is they bought something, number one, they liked. Uh, it was popular for them. They went in and, and spent a bunch of money on it to get it to a certain point, but then the market's not there. Uh, you'll see as I build this channel and we work together and communicate and, and, and talk with each other back and forth, you'll see I, a lot of times I buy stuff and I build it because I like it. I build it because it's something cool to me. And, and I do do a lot of things. I've got access to a lot, of, uh, a lot of services and things that I necessarily don't do, but I've got a lot of friends that are experts in things and we swap out. So as far as the cash outlay, the capital outlay, in many cases, mine is not as much as someone who just basically bought a car, we're gonna do it in a one car garage, we're gonna to try to do what we can do ourselves and, and farm out the rest of it. That word farm out can get expensive. Uh, so you really need to sit down and consider, am I gonna sell the thing, and if so, how far down the road? Uh, that way you can spend your, your, you know, spend your money and spread it out over a period of time. Uh, second of all, what services do I have access to? What am I good at? Uh, buying a project that you're wanting to build for a function to go with cruising and car shows and stuff, and trying to figure out how to do certain things like replace body panels, weld, remove hook, uh, hook bolts, uh, rivets, those type things, uh, fabrication, boxing in a frame, narrowing a rear end, uh, hanging a rear end if you've never done that, switching over from a, a, a leaf spring to a four link or a three link or trailing arms, all of that type stuff. Buying a project for yourself that you're wanting to do in a certain period of time is not the time and place to try to learn to do that yourself. Um, you will become frustrated, it'll get pushed aside, life happens, guys, okay? Um, it's just one, it's just a, a progression. So, again, figure out what you want, make sure how long you wanna do it, or how long you wanna to take to get it to a certain point, and, and consider what you actually can do. Uh, a lot of local garages in my area, we're in the Piedmont of North Carolina, uh, down next to South Carolina. A lot of good hot rodders around, a lot of guys got garages, they do service work on new cars, old cars, whatever. Uh, I would suggest going out and talking to those folks and saying, look, I'm thinking about doing this, what would you charge me to go through a complete brake system, stem to stern, go through the fuel system, those type things. And if that's something you're not good at, if you're not good at bending tubing, you don't know, you know, no experience with it, eh, probably not the time to start to do a complete brake rebuild. Uh, talk to those folks and begin to understand where they're coming from and their costs, because a lot of times you'll, you'll ask for a price on something, it'll hit you, you're like, wait a minute, gosh, that sounds awful expensive. Well, 
when you start talking to these folks and build a relationship and understand there's, there's a lot of work. Now don't get me wrong, there's people out there that'll take advantage of you too, especially if they sense the fact you don't really know a lot about what you're talking about. But, but again, you can talk around and talk to hot rodders in your area. And, and, and I've never met anyone at these cruise ins, car shows, swap meets. If you go up and start talking, they'll shoot straight with you. Uh, you, you can tell when somebody's you know pulling your leg, if you will. Uh, again, get your timeline out there, put the car together, and, and, and begin to do uh, the small things. Um, I would not recommend uh, immediately trying to do engine swaps, transmission swaps, things like that. Try to get the most bang for your buck. So in other words, if you know you, you like the sound of a V8, try to get a car that's got a V8 in it, whether it's a flathead or not, doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of your older small block Chevrolets are getting hard to find, 327s, 283s. A lot of guys are going to the 350s. Of course, everybody knows about the LS swaps. I can assure you, <laughs> if you don't know anything about swapping out an LS, that's probably not the first engine swap you want to try as an individual, okay? It will not go well for you, okay? So just keep that in mind. But again, decide what you like. You know, do you like to see the side pipes? Do you like to see dual exhaust? All of those type things. And then start trying to gear your purchase towards that. You buy a car, it's already got the V8 in it, don't have to worry about it. Automatic transmission versus a straight drive. What do you want to do? You know, love driving a straight drive myself, don't care. Three on the tree, five speed, six speed, doesn't matter. Trim it, pro stock, doesn't matter. I just love swapping gears. Now, that being said, a lot of the stuff that I've done recently, I went away from a straight drive in lieu of an automatic, and that was basically for drivability and, and what I plan on doing with it down the road. Uh, so again, try to buy something that's already got some stuff done. And, and again, that point right there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you vividly what I'm talking about in the car that we, we picked up this past week. Uh, so again, find something that you like. But at the same time, before you start doing that, you know, I know, I know, I've got a good friend of mine that loves Nashes, loves the Ramblers. Okay, not a real popular car out there in the car show world, but now it does have a pretty strong following in the rat rod world. Okay, so understand what car you want and where the genre is or where the market is if you do at some point in time say, hey, you know, I'm probably realistically going to try to sell this thing. So keep that in mind uh, when you get it. But understand where your limit is. When you start to look at these cars, go on Craigslist, go on Car Trader. There's, there's a uh, Haggerty. They, they've got uh, got a lot of uh, a good tools in there. You can put in prices and play around. Understand before you buy the thing where the top end of the market is, the mid range, and the low end, and decide where you think you're going to settle out at. Okay? Because again, I, I can't tell you how many cars I've either brokered sales for or bought myself. Did a little bit of work, try to finish up where the, the individual that had it didn't, and flip the car. Okay, I'm, I'm not real big on flipping. I said that earlier. I uh, I like buying stuff that I like to work on because I'll look at it and I'll have a vision. I'll have a, a, an idea of what I want to do with the car. And when I get to that point, then again, I'm making that decision. I'm talking about, am I going to go on and spend a little bit more money uh, and try to get this thing to the next step in, it, in, its, in its history to try to make more money? Or is it going to be more advantageous to stop right here, sell it, make you know, a decent piece of money on it and let someone else that's very interested in the car uh, take it on and do whatever they want to. Uh, again, um, hot rodding, street rods, playing with cars, that is a fluid situation. And once you get involved in it, you can start playing around and looking at it. But I would strongly suggest looking at whatever it is that you're wanting and whatever you're looking at, know what the market is, low, middle, and high, before you ever get to the swap meets or the auctions or start looking around and behind all these buildings and people's houses and stuff and, and asking about these cars. Understand that first, okay? Uh, again, bottom line is, a lot of stuff out there I like, but it comes right down to money. Uh, you gotta ask yourself, can I afford to do this? Because a lot of people don't think about this. They build a nice looking car. Yeah, we're gonna to go to this cruise in, that cruise in. Right now, as I'm shooting this video, we've got two uh, two functions coming up first of next month up in uh, Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area. We've got Shades of the Past and you've got uh, the Rod Run coming up middle part of the month. Uh, from where I'm at, about a three, three and a half hour run. Are you gonna build a car that you can drive that far? If you wanna be a part of a big show like that, and, and trust me, at some point you you will want to if you stay into the hobby. Um, are you going to build something and be able to build something that you can drive that far reliably? You don't want to get on the road with your friends and family and have something to break down on you. Okay, so if you're not going to do that, then you got to think about a trailer. Uh, you got to think about something to pull it with. Okay, all of these, what I'm getting at is, is all of these are kind of outlying expenses that you don't think about when you're just excited about buying it. Man, I'm going to have it. Uh, mm, you, get a, you get a Corvette, you get a Chevelle, you get a Camaro. You got 373 rear end in it. You got a big block Chevrolet. You're not. You're not going to drive that 
from Piedmont of North Carolina down the interstate to Pigeon Forge, okay? You know, unless you got all week to get there, okay? Let's be realistic about it. But again, uh, folks, you understand what I'm telling you right here. This is based on my experience and a lot of it's my opinion and things that I've lived through. My opinion in 50 cent won't buy you a sun drop, okay? If you don't know what a sun drop is, look it up. Great drink right here in the North Carolina, South Carolina area. If you're looking, you know, outside this area, need to come south, try a sun drop. Uh, but again, we're gonna walk outside here, take a look and see what we've got in, in the way of a, a new purchase. Uh, this car is second in the wings. We're getting ready, and you can see my forward behind me. We're going to take it out of the shop and bring in a car that I've had since 1983. I've uh, done a bunch of stuff over the years. But quite frankly, this car has been sitting in storage since 1995. Uh, it'll come in first, and we'll make another video about that. Uh, and then once we get it to a certain point to where we can move it in and out of the shop, a little play toy sitting outside here, uh, we'll, we'll bring it in and, and start going down. I will tell you this, that I'm, I'm very much into the rat rods. I'm obviously by the name of the channel. I'm very much into the rust uh, and, and just doing things neat, uh, doing things that are cool. Uh, so I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. So when we step outside, uh, the next stage of this video, we're gonna do a walk around of uh, our latest acquisition. So stay tuned, thank you.